or it sounds windows open reading vlog um maybe weird cuts because people are home but that's fine um this is the one where thing where i chose five random books from my pbr uh the only person being that like they have to be gay uh for me to read good times good times um there are reasoning for each of them there was gonna be a, a little there's a little change um from my initial tbr where um thirsty mermaids was supposed to be a graphic novel for this but i tried very hard to get my hands on it this morning but i could not i'm very sad uh whatever uh it, it is it's fine uh and then i messaged i was like okay can you like find me another one but then i was like oh wait a second no it's good luck because there's only three queer graphic novels on my tbr thirsty mermaids one i don't think i can get my hands on and then one i know i can't because it's her stuff for volume five <laughs> um but stingray did just message me with thankfully stingray had to be up early today thank god um with the one they're gonna replace it with which is one they already read this month so i know i can get my hands on it um and that is project not um this is like the only one i don't have like a reasoning why because thirsty mermaids was supposed to be because um the cover looks funny and graphic novel so i assume this one's because graphic novel okay but also stingray liked it so there's that um the other ones see let's see if i can memorize the reasons why for all of them um song of achilles i will be dual reading it i did i did already find the audiobook and then uh ebook's pretty easy to find um so that's pretty easy uh that one the like official reasoning in the message with the reasonings was uh because i spent on my tbr for too long which is like accurate i think it's like one of the first hundred books on my tbr um but i think it's also to pay me back for the emotional damage that i caused with legendborn and also i wish you all the best like two days ago so that's fine that's it's fine um i'm expecting to cry it's okay um i do like madeline miller's writing i have read cersei um didn't realize it was the same author uh when i read it but um yeah i did i did read that one really liked it so i'm expecting to cry have a good time you know fun stuff um and then there's sage smoke and fire i know almost nothing about it i think there's like something to do with ghosts or dead people or something like that i don't know it's like got almost no ratings on goodreads but i was able to find it i did i was worried after thirsty mermaid so i went to make sure and i was able to get my hands on it um pretty easily um i don't know how i found out about it i don't know what it is all of this stuff and the reasoning why is because at a quote it's 666 pages friendship <laughs> all right yeah um the next one is the one i do plan to read today on top of the graphic novel um i do want to get like them out of the way that's why i'm filming this uh now is disintegrate dissociate i think that's how it goes yes um which is a short poetry collection and the reasoning why was because it's short um and i was like yeah i'm pretty sure it's a poetry collection it won't take me longer than an hour probably to read um something easy um well i would say easy i'm expecting to like have an emotional impact because poetry collection but you know fun times um and all that and then the fifth one is um the dead in the dark yeah that is the name of it um the courtney gould that thing ray has already read uh the reason was obviously um, I think it's because Stingray really liked it. And also the fact that I'm reading the new Courtney Gould without having ever read a Courtney Gould. <laughs> and I'm still going to read it before I read this one for this vlog because that one gets goes out beforehand. Um, like it's published beforehand. Uh, the release date. There we go. The release date is before this. I could like read it for this vlog uh, because that's in like a few days and I got to read it and write the review because I have it from that Kelly. So um you know i keep on bringing it up and stingray may hate me for it it's fine um but yes uh read a different courtney gould um is basically the moral of the story uh to have a good time i think i don't know i don't know if it's gonna be a good time i'm scared of it but that's fine um but yeah that's that's the five books for this vlog i'm going to try to knock the two easy ones out today um but i have a lot of other stuff i gotta do so we'll see hello welcome to the wonderful corner uh, it has been like five-ish days I think since I last talked to you and since then I technically knocked off three books for this vlog uh, even though I technically was supposed to update you like a day afterwards with the first two but that's fine that's fine it's fine um it's been such a long time I grew a whole pimple and then it went away like 
<laughs> that that that's that's how long it's been. Um, uh, so I guess I guess I can talk about uh the first one, uh, disintegrate, dissociate, um, which is if you like poetry, read it. Like it's really short. Um, so there's that, but also it's really good. Um, I now kind of want to grab my iPad because I did. Uh, on my Goodreads review list off all my favorites in it which is like half of them um it's but listen she did not have to start that hard like hello hello um but yes it was so good um the author is a trans uh indigenous woman from Canada I believe I don't know how to pronounce this specific group but um or you know what I mean um but I believe uh it's part of the Cree I believe I listen it's been like almost a week and I'm this is from her Wikipedia page but um yes uh so a lot of it is either um about her life being uh an indigenous woman um and also uh being a woman of color dating but also being a woman of color dating who is also trans and it's good soup it's good soup um so 4.5 stars <laughs> uh i mean i'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna get my ipad and like look at the list uh so the f uh my favorites were dear white cis men which i think it's like the first one um dream me um prairie beneficiary reckless the girl's brother who will save you now is this my home newfoundland constellations and date number two good soup good soup um yeah no it's it's real good um highly recommend uh and then project not um was fine it was fine i rated it 3.5 stars it was okay um i pretty early on it's like hey time travel um i guess i can talk about this one a little more since it's not poetry collection so there's a plot um but basically this one is uh the main character wakes up one day and he's in basically a lab or hospital like area and learns that he has been teleported from 1986 i believe to the future um 200 2134 something like that those are arbitrary numbers i know it's from the 80s to something like over 100 years from now right uh part of this kind of thing where they teach kids history by like bringing people from the past to the future um and have like people from the time teach them about it right um which in theory makes sense but then like some sp suspicious things are happening um things like that and also um each person who is brought to the future is paired up with a person in the future uh to like coexist um and help each other out and whatnot and the main character falls for the boy that is the person that he's supposed to be coexisting with and all this fun stuff and instantly i was like time travel i love time travel and then stingray said actually mm, and i went oh no and then i like almost immediately right after <laughs> they said that i guessed what the actual twist is and it was like supposed to be this whole big dramatic moment the last like i don't know like 10 percent, and i guessed it real early on and i went oh <laughs> okay um it was fine like the, the the very ending where you get to see a version of him at least uh seeing his friend georgia uh and actually meeting her and like her actually being excited to see him and all this stuff was like very nice i like that and all that jazz um but like i guess that way too really on uh so 3.5 stars um yeah also was like yeah I don't know what else to say about that one um and then we get to go into the super long one the 666 page one um what is it sage fire and smoke yeah um i have thoughts and opinions so it i got i think three percent in which is 20 pages before i dnf'd it i didn't even finish the first chapter i read the prologue or the preface and then the beginning of the first chapter which is mostly the main character's outfit listen the synopsis says that like she moves from the city to louisiana after her powers are awoken and she's got to um take charge of uh this magical community in louisiana um and i thought she was gonna be in her 20s but she's like in her 40s 
and also it starts with her moving to Louisiana and then uh people start like showing up dead or something like that and she's got to solve all these mysteries and whatnot hear me out in a 666 page book that is ex obscenely long and the descriptors in this were unnecessary and so long like most of what I read was just this woman's outfits and what the outside of this house that she's moving into looks like like that is it it is so much and so unnecessary and it would have been fine if it was like every once in a while but it was constant unnecessary descriptors and like you know how like it can go one of two ways where like the only other example i can think of in my head immediately and it is invisible life of Addie larue where it's like nicely done and poetic and uh actually like fits in with the theme of the book and all this stuff and then in this it, it, it wasn't well done it was just there to be there to look smart and then i just was annoyed and then also i remembered then it was like 666 pages and then i went Ugh. and then stingray told me to just dnf it because like i couldn't i couldn't put myself through that uh as soon as i started they were like you can dnf it if you need to and i was like i don't know if i'm gonna like this um yeah no also also in that 666 pages you cannot explain the magic system you have to put a not ellipses an asterisk next to words that uh are supposed to do with magical stuff and then you have to go to the back of the book to the glossary and look up what that thing is instead of you explaining it to me like i get game of thrones has a glossary but it also explains stuff to you at the same time like you can go to the glossary in case you forget but like it also explains stuff no this wasn't explaining this was just being like this thing happened and then you have to go into the back of the book and figure out what that thing actually is and then you learn oh she's talking to people in her dreams that's what's happening yeah um so i dnf that one uh, next up uh the dead in the dark um since then i have read uh where it goes die because that was published yesterday um came out yesterday so yeah i've like read that whole entire book uh to do my review of it and all that fun stuff so i know low-key what to expect from a Courtney Gould now but I'm liking this one more um already uh it's less of a slow build mystery horror and it's more of like a uh, small town creepy there's like uh, the mystery of um Logan's dads uh are both from this town and they're now back in this town they're both uh have like this paranormal ghost hunting show um that they work together on uh one of her dads she gets along with really great the other one there's like a lot of distance um there was like apparently this moment in her past where like they he snapped at her like really harshly and no one knows why like the camera crew was there and they were like hello um and so uh and since then there's just been a bridge between them like there was a little bit of a bridge like or bridge there's like been a distance between them and there was a little bit of one before that but like since then uh she's recognized that he doesn't care um so she just won't care either um but it's like a small town um there's been some kids going missing um there's something to do with the darkness i have theories um i'm just gonna say the word john paris forcing right um that's my theory right now um but uh yeah kids have gone missing it's like dual pov too that's also i think helps with the car going up the road um with the speed of the book uh because you have logan um and moving to the small town uh she's been moved around a lot her whole entire childhood um and she's used to being on her own because they're always off doing their show and all this stuff so she's like been moved out of what was supposed to be her forever home um or their forever home in LA um to move to this small town also the way <laughs> the way they moved her to the small town and Brandon the dad that she has distance with was the there for like six months didn't even go to her graduation because of it right uh before alejo her other dad and i think that's how you pronounce his name and she went and like i think the reason why they didn't go is because the people who are going missing are under the age of 18 and she's 17 for a few more months and so like the way they were whispering on the phone it was like kind of giving me the vibe that like um they didn't want her to be there and whatnot in case something happened to her but they decided to say ah fuck it um you know um but like her dads have passed here um 
oh, I, like as soon as I got into the town, oh, I went to uh, the cemetery where they were also having a vigil for one of the missing kids. And uh, the other point of view is that missing kid's girlfriend, um, who is like um, the leader of the town, kind of, who like owns everything in the town, is her mother and has like some type of uh, past with Leo. And it, it seems like the name Logan has something to do with it. Um, but she like was trying to find her boyfriend and do all this stuff and there's like some weird things happening with her friend group um she feels like she can feel her boyfriend with her at all times um and she's trying to find him um there's like a run-in when logan and brandon are out shopping and her friend group comes in and starts being like you should leave this town and like it's it's hinted at like almost immediately um some homophobic and possibly racist stuff um and so they're like what are you doing here you don't belong here all this stuff trying to uh kick her out of them down while she's shopping um and all this stuff and Brayden just like leaves um while she tries to fight back uh and Ashley like feels bad about it right um at least there's that but also like Leo and her mother I think her name's Tammy ran into each other at the grocery store and there was like a little bit of animosity but like, it seems like they used to be friends um something happened in his past that is connected to her past like I think someone died um maybe it has to do with someone named logan um and logan doesn't know about any of their past and she's like wants to know about their past but they won't tell her and so she's like i'm gonna figure out what's going on um but also she plans to move uh away and find her forever place as soon as like she turns 18. um i'm assuming her and ashley join up together to um figure out what's going on in this town um yeah also it seems like the darkness is like possessing someone's body you know normal things um yeah i'm like only 18 percent, but yeah it's good so far i really like it so there's that um with that i'm gonna go probably play stardew is it 2 p.m on friday before this goes up and i just finished the second to last book in this and i still have a whole other book to read yes are we ignoring it yes <laughs> to talk about the dead in the dark um i was i was trying to figure out what to read it i just finished it i, ju I just finished it uh I'm trying to figure out what to read it i'm going here we go like five stars okay here's the thing i normally don't like books with characters that i don't enjoy um i can like see the benefit of reading those generally characters who are mean to people for no given reason this is a book with a lot of hate crime uh weaved into it so like generally a lot of people in this town like most of the town uh are not good people and i generally would not like reading these books uh books about these characters but somehow the way corny gold writes i had a good time like i didn't like the characters but like that was on purpose <laughs> um and then i also like the small town vibes and like the ghost um stuff was really fun i think i like ghost hunting books um or ghost haunting books and stuff like that um especially like small town mystery the ghost hauntings you know i think i like those um this was good soup um i'm going with five stars um i was kind of right and kind of wrong literally i was thinking 4.5 stars and then the uh revelation of like the who done it happened and literally all my issues were explained away with that literally there were dozens of voice messages sent to stingray while they were asleep of me complaining about all these things and stingray was just there listening to them first thing this morning when they knew they knew <laughs> they knew and i was just like oh <laughs> okay so like i have to give it five stars like there's literally no issues i have with this book because it just it all makes sense it just and it was all good and so beautifully raw with like the loneliness i think the themes of grief and loneliness are just a theme in courtney gould book i mean i've read two i think there's three maybe there's only two but you know that's fine um i generally like that in books um the mystery is good the um horror aspect of it was good the um learning about the ghost aspect was fun and the paranormal aspect was fun um but also like figuring out the whodunit like i was so close to being right but also so wrong at the same time 
and you know um good times um yeah uh anyways i made a meme about it here you go <laughs> um i'm gonna go record a podcast episode before i read song of achilles um that i do have the audiobook of i don't know if i ever mentioned that i have the audiobook of it and then it's under four hours at three times speed so i think i can i think i can do it both of them today and then edit the whole thing and have it ready to go <laughs> for tomorrow morning it's fine um but yeah i i don't have anything else to say other than it's boiling hot in my room um so i'm gonna go before my brain melts um yes i was supposed to read all the song killies on friday and then update you at the late saturday morning and then uh like first thing in the morning and then upload it um and yes it's sunday now and i just finished it it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine um yeah i got like 20 percent of the way through um you know around uh the time literally i want to say <laughs> a chapter or two after where i left off is when um they get sent to go to war um in troy but like then they don't and a bunch of other stuff happens um in between there um but basically like it starts like <laughs> there's like this much happiness which is, which is where i left off and then like right where i left off it starts it just starts getting sadder and sadder and sadder and you're just like uh especially fun when you're like me and you know just enough about uh the mythology um and whatnot and so you're just sitting there just like knowing what's gonna happen and then being like uh, uh especially when a character comes in and then you're like oh i think this is this person and then you're like wait a second no they didn't immediately kill her they like they didn't sacrifice her she's gonna marry achilles there's no way this is the same person i was thinking of it's fine and then and then they kill her um hilariously not hilariously uh hear me out i think i have all my physical um great mythology retellings in this pile cough cough for a reason we're not talking about it um for i want to talk about two of them uh in comparison because one of them is about troy uh which is this one uh i prefer this one over song of achilles personally um just because it's from the woman's point of view um and you know uh this might be more interesting to me but uh yeah and then and then of course i have cersei um i think <laughs> hear me out i reacted more strongly in the moment to song of achilles especially when like certain things were happening and i was like ah um but like sitting there and thinking about it for a bit i think i like cersei more i rated both of them four stars i rated um song of achilles four stars it didn't make me cry i almost said at one point when like every once in a while there'd be like someone would say something that has to do with like they would say something oh, i can't even remember it properly but i think there's like one moment when um patroclus is like we know i can't pronounce his name um it says something about uh them being together and him being his happiness and all this stuff and then instantly right after that they're called to war um and like few little things there um with uh hints of what's going to happen and then they'll be like oh there's no way we could like not be happy together oh right i remember it was achilles <laughs> it was achilles being like have you ever heard of a happy hero and patroclus like um and achilles is like no because there's none but i'm gonna be the first one to swear it to be and then patroclus is like why do i have to swear and he's like because you're the one that's gonna make me happy you're the one that gives me happiness so you have to swear it to be and then if you're a greek mythology hoe like me you know so i think we blame it all on <laughs> um but you know there's like a few little moments where like it hints um at what's gonna happen or uh how they're gonna be happy but you know what's gonna happen and so it's just like uh and i almost cried but like i didn't um and very similar to this one uh that cover is falling apart on um also from a woman's point of view which i think for greek mythology i prefer greek mythology retellings um that being said i did like it also like there might be a plan to reread these so um we'll see because uh i was talking to some people in one of the book club discords i'm on and uh because one of them just started cersei 
and I, the same day, had Star Song and Killy, so we were talking about it. Um, and a lot of them who had read both said that they preferred Cersei because it stuck with them longer. And I feel like I will have a similar thing. Um, it definitely gives me that vibe. Um, but yeah, spoiler for a future vlog in August, I will be rereading. So Cersei, so we'll see if I truly like it more than Song of Achilles because it's been a good few years I want to say at least 2021 um but yeah that's that's that I gave it four stars um the characters were good I was not expecting it to be uh from Patroclus point of view um which was interesting because like not really a spoiler um after he dies um like how how do you get right after he dies but um yeah it, it was from his ghost point of view just watching everything happen um also can someone please slap Achilles son upside the head I don't remember his name which is hilarious because there was a point near the end of the book where Odysseus is like hey who knows like he's trying to get him to uh put Patroclus name on the grave because like him and Achilles are sharing a grave and if you don't have a grave a proper grave um yeah just wandered earth um aimlessly and he won't do it because he doesn't want to like betray his father's memory um with a commoner despite the fact that he was also a prince um and Odysseus is like listen uh who know like he doesn't he's like who knows who will remember about the memories of like these stories of us um like maybe I'll be more famous than you uh who knows and I'm like yes because I remember Odysseus I've read that book I read the Odyssey multiple times instantly as soon as every single time they said Achilles son's name I out, out of my brain out of my brain I don't I don't know I don't remember his name um but yeah um someone slapped him <laughs> or it stabbed him someone did try and then she died and she was kind of my favorite character also a character in, in uh, silence of the girls one um kind of the main character in that one actually uh but yeah it was interesting because like i knew one from reading other greek mythology retellings and then also just being a greek mythology hoe um I, I like knew certain things it's so all just sitting there just like <sighs> yeah as it would happen as I was playing my Stardew Valley um that being said the audiobook narrator great uh if you're gonna do it I go with audio you did a great job I don't I want to like the first time I listened to it I was like do I know him from like something because like he, his voice sounds familiar um but I'm not sure about that but uh yeah that's it for the vlog that's the last book um i'm gonna go edit this um but first um things that are coming out uh wednesday is the tbr uh that i'm gonna film after i edit this so same outfit um and then uh instead of saturday next week it will be sunday again and it will be the wrap up because like technically i could go through the whole process of like filming it and editing it and uploading it all on the same day uh, I could but like you know I'm already in a spiral I don't need more stress right so um it can be uh recorded and then uh do some editing Saturday and then the other half on Sunday um give me self an extra day uh and then after that will be the normal Wednesday read with me's and vlogs and all that fun stuff uh so yep yeah. um I think that's everything um oh go check out Stingray whose links are below no stingray's links are always below i don't know why i said it like that but like um since i was forced to read these books by stingray yeah yeah go check out stingray mm -hmm.